to AWS reInvent. We're live on twitch.tv slash AWS for the day from the Expo Hall here at AWS reInvent in Las Vegas with uh, you know, 43,000 of our closest friends. Um, we've got another one of our deep dives for this next session where we're going to be joined by some members of one of the teams responsible for one of the new AWS services that we launched here this morning. Uh, my name's Ian Massingham. I'm a technology evangelist with AWS. And I'm joined by Adrian Hornsby, another one of the technology evangelism team here Hi everyone. from the Nordics. And Adrian's going to be leading this session. So oh, great. Uh, I'm so excited about the announcement, to be honest. Uh, uh, Amazon Conference blows my mind. So before we go into trying to explain what Amazon Conference is, can you guys introduce yourself and you know, to tell yeah. us Glad. about you a bit? Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Vlad Zhukov. Uh, I'm running the engineering team that built uh, Amazon Comprehend product uh, and uh, uh, other language services that we also launched today. Great. My name is Nino Weiss. I'm the product manager for Amazon Comprehend. Oh, nice awesome. to meet everybody. Great. All right, so let's deep dive right away. What is Amazon Comprehend? Amazon Comprehend is a continuously trained NLP service that we've Taken a, to, we've taken a bunch of data, we've trained a model, and we've brought it to you in a very simple to consume way, so you can just get to start it on your solutions. Right, uh, Amazon fashion, we always work backward from customers, right? So what were the problems customers were facing that we decided to launch a product like that? You know, when, when, you, when you step back and you look at a lot of the information being generated that's really useful for businesses today, it's coming from things like news articles. Right. It's coming from things that are being talked about in, in, a so, in social media. So we built Amazon Comprehend so our customers can easily analyze that information and attach it to existing business you know, questions that they're trying to answer, like are people happy with my brand product or service? Or you know, what's going on in this part of the world that might impact how I do business there, for example. So uh, what kind of uh, information can Comprehend uh, uh, analyze? Amazon Comprehend is, you know, it's, it's really ideal for any real unstructured information. So, okay. you know, like I said, like, we have customers that are analyzing news articles to find out what's going on, you know, in the Middle East, and, and is that going to impact uh, supply trade routes? So sentiment or, analysis, it's, for example. It's, yeah, you can, you can go into text, and you can extract entities, and those yes. are, those are uh, categorized, right? Okay. Like brands, organizations, people. Uh, you can extract key phrases, which are like noun-based phrases to really understand what's in there. You know, uh, why are people staying here? It's a beautiful cottage. Oh. It's on a beautiful pond. Right? Those are really important things. Absolutely. We identify the language. So if you have a multilingual application, we'll tell you what language is, is currently being processed. And then we also analyze the sentiment. So is something negative or positive? Right, and if you think about any unstructured data, the data produced by humans, it's by its nature unstructured, and so as a result, you need to apply different techniques to extract meaningful information and build your products on top of unstructured data than in your normal structured way against databases. So we give you all the tools to be able to deal with unstructured textual data generated by humans in the way you deal with any other data you have. Yeah, right. So, I mean, b before going into demo, uh, I have one question. Is it deep learning under the hood? And you would talk about continuously train. What does that mean? What, what, you know, what kind of things are? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it is deep learning under the hood. So we're using MXNet-based sequence-to-sequence uh, -sequence models for training. And we collect a very large uh, data across a very different set of domains. Uh, we annotate this data, and then we run uh, large training jobs. And we do it continuously, hence continuously train model. So this model gets better every day. We, every day we add more data to our training data sets, we run our training models, and so as you start using this, you'll see continuous improvement in how it recognizes your, your information. And, and let me add to that, you because I think that's one of the key value props of the service that needs to really be thought about. Yeah, because training. you make it sound it's trivial to do <laughs> continuously <laughs> trained models. It's not, right? This yeah. Is a, it, it, yeah. But that's what we do for you. So for you <laughs> yeah. as a customer, that's absolutely <laughs> trivial. Yeah. For us, it's a, uh, engineers and scientists that work on making this simple for the customer. Yeah, I love but that. But it is, at the end of the day, it's, it's a pretty sophisticated right. uh, models under the hood. That, uh, that and this we is exactly the power of cloud, right? abstracting complex problems into very simple, easy to use service, right? right. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, you know, Tell us how, uh, how simple it is, because we had recognition, we had poly. Uh, how simple is our uh, Comprehend API? It, it is as simple as poly recognition. It's entirely serverless, so you don't need to worry about infrastructure, you don't need to worry standing out your service, you don't need to worry about 
doing your algorithms. All you can do is put your data on S3 or just hit our APIs directly. Uh, it's web service based and uh, you essentially get the results right away. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm sure everyone is yeah, wondering. I just want to see, oh, yes. see that demo. Can we do so a demo? demo? <laughs> yes. So we'll I think show can you. we switch the, to the demo? Yep. So I, I, what I like to do, we have, this, we have this really nice sort of WYSIWYG console that helps you understand the service and the APIs that it offers. So in this, in this case, what you can see here is we have some sample text in the console. You could type in or paste whatever you'd like to analyze. And the service provides these four APIs and it has a fifth API, which I'll show you. So these four APIs, the first thing we do is we extract you know, what we call named entities. So in this case, you can see Amazon.com is extracted. It's an organization. We show you the confidence. This is how confident we are that we're correct. So this, you can sort of set a quality bar for what results you want to use and what results you don't want to use. So what's a good result? Oh, most of the results will be, you know, uh, pretty in the, in the high confidence, yeah. above 80. So, um, you know, but really you could use whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, cool. right. Uh, a lot of it depends on your use case. So if you, yeah. you we give you an ability to trade off uh, kind of quality for uh, getting more information out of the data. Right. So it depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah. So then we also, we provide key phrases, like noun-based phrases. I, I like key phrases because what, where in the entities we do Amazon.com as an organization, key phrases will catch things like customers, books, and blenders. These are those other really important parts of the text that you really need to understand to really understand what's, what's being said in that text. So then moving down, the third API is language identification. So really simple, we'll look at the text, we'll tell you what language it is, and we've got pretty extensive coverage. We do roughly 100 languages. Yeah, wow. so it's pretty nice. Oh, awesome. um, so if you have a multilingual application, that's really helpful. And then I, I, everybody understands with NLP sentiment. Sentiment's a really important API. So we'll, in this case, this is a fairly neutral statement. You know, we're just kind of talking about things. But yeah, if I said, it's a fact-based you know, statement, right? <laughs> so it's not really going to have a lot of sentiment in it. Yeah. So I, I just got a new pair of tennis shoes. So if I say I really like my Nikes. Well, we know that's a really positive statement. Yeah, right. If yeah. you're a brand manager or someone that wants to understand how your customers are feeling about something, this is absolutely critical. So you mean, I'm a customer, I have a brand, I can just simply start using the API and have a feel for what yeah. ingest, for example, Twitter feeds. Yeah, I already, exactly. use, uh, I already use sentiment analysis together with some chatbots that I've built. Yeah. I'm to looking forward to ripping and replacing exactly. them with this. It looks, like a, yeah. looks like a really cool tool to use for that. It's, or you can talk all, take all your customer uh, reviews from your website or from your product, and yeah. you can feed them, and you can get the actual contextual uh, sentiment rather than star ratings, which yeah. is yeah. Awesome often doesn't necessarily match what people say. Yep. And the, so there's a fifth API, which more, is more of a job API. And so the folks that are familiar watching, this is based on LDA. This is topic modeling. So this is really important. You know, We've really taken something complex and we've made it a simple API where you can just say, here's an S3 bucket that contains a corpus of documents. I want to extract 10 to 100 topics out of those documents. This is really important for use cases where you want to organize information based so this on This is topic. a batch-based interaction model then, rather than a real-time yeah. API, you're going to point to yeah. a data yeah. set? Yeah. yeah, and then why this service is so useful, we have customers that are like recommending or suggesting contextual content you know, to their readers, yep, for example, right. if you have a if you have a content if you're a news website. organization, yep. for so example. So understanding the topics in, in content awesome. is so yeah. critical, yeah. and we've wrapped that as a nice API for you. Got a couple of questions on the stream which I just want to quickly put to you. So a couple of these questions relate to integration between Amazon Comprehend and other services. So there's a customer asking about feasibility of using the new transcribe service to convert uh, audio streams to written text and then feeding yeah. that written text yeah. through this sort of sim that's system. So powerful, so that's, that's exactly how we see this, right? We see yeah. it taking the, any audio data or any textual data. So if your company that you collect audio and text, you can transcribe your audio, convert it to text, and then feed it into, into Comprehend to extract meaningful information. You right. can also use uh, Translate, which is another service, yeah. and you can do it in different languages. So you yeah. can translate it into English, and then you can. You One can thing that struck me with your language detection is if you had a mixed model for some human translation services for lower volume languages, and then automation around the high volume stuff, you could actually exactly. pre-assess the language speci specificity with this service yeah. and route the translation jobs to either automation right. or human beings yeah. based on what your coverage well, was. In, right? in yeah. fact, our translate service uses language detection from Comprehend. In order to do the to choose the, the model, to choose yeah. the, the model yeah. behind the scenes, so we use yeah. our own services as we build it. Let me yeah. let me actually I want to expand that because I think there's something really interesting. It, it's not just using this with the other language APIs, <laughs> but it's really important for customers to understand that Amazon Comprehend plus a, an AWS 
analytics service like Kinesis or Redshift gives you scalable text analytics. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yes. So we we expect the majority of our customers, and we're hearing from them that they're saying, "I've got a pipeline. I'm ingesting information. I'm translating it to, to Vlad's point. Now I'm going to analyze it with Comprehend, and now I'm going to push it into back into S3 and use Athena yep. to actually query it." And for example, if, if, if we show the desktop, we actually went and built a nice little social analytics demo in QuickSight following that exact pipeline that I just described. So you've, got, you've got actually got tweets coming in from different parts of the world. Here's an example of translated tweets. They're coming in from all over the world. You can see we've got some Spanish, we've got some French, we've got some German. Um, so you know exactly to your point, there's a pipeline. It's an enrichment pipeline. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. great. And, and you can see, these are actual real tweets. You can see the yeah. entity categories and the most discussed entities we have from AWS mentions on Twitter. So that's the right. dashboard of Bill Wheels QuickSight. Yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah. So this is a combination of QuickSight, Translate, exactly. Comprehend, uh, Kinesis Farhose connected to Twitter. So it's no a combination of multiple AWS services. There's no servers. There, there's there. no servers. Yeah. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. That's so, fun. Yeah. That's, that's the power of combining all the services yeah. to building the entire analytics solution for yourself. So you worked with that product for a while, right? Uh, can you tell us a little bit what was the challenges with building such a things or? I mean, there is, there's, I can there's, imagine there's, it's crazy. Yeah, right? there's multiple. I mean, building the state-of-the-art models in itself is challenging, so we have brilliant scientists yeah. who uh, continuously think about this kind of problems on a daily basis, so they focus on building uh, a very sophisticated state-of-the-art models uh, that outperform anything out there. With MXNet. Uh, with MXNet as our, as our framework of choice. Uh, and then we, uh, we also focus on data collection. So a lot of this depends on how much data and how variety of data you get. So we continuously uh, get the data, we continuously annotate the data, and then we run all of this at scale. So even though for the customer it's serverless, behind the scene, it's we are the ones taking care of all the servers. Yep. Cool. So we're running a massive infrastructure on top of AWS. Yeah, but customers don't have to worry about so that, right? They just call the API and you and ensure and that there's enough capacity exactly. there that to respond to those requests. That work that Vlad just talked about, that's what I love about this service. We took all of that work and yeah. moved it yeah. off of our customer's plate onto on our plate. AWS, so right, you can just yeah. really focus on Let your tech analytics. <laughs> yeah, oh, so there's, a, there's a question on the stream about some of the jumping around between different services that we're doing here. So we said, as a Kinesis-based pipeline for ingesting data, and then we said Amazon Kinesis Firehose to persist the enriched data back into Redshift. So you'd have your text documents, for example, or pointers to them hitting a Kinesis stream. Each time you get a record there, a Lambda function would process, call the Comprehend API, right. yep. insert more data either back into yep. the same stream or into a different one, yep. and then that stream would ultimately end up in Redshift. That's typical of the kind yes. of pipeline-based applications that, yes. that customers yep. are building with AWS yep. today, right? Yep. For, for real-time processing, in this case, yep. we're doing it Twitter. Uh, yep. uh, to give some ideas to uh, folks uh, online, You've been working with the service for a long time. You probably, if you would be a customer, what would you build today with uh, Comprehend? Uh, I mean, so I mean, Nina gave a couple of examples, but definitely um, analysis of brands, yeah. analysis of Twitter. We were actually seeing before we even launched the service. We were monitoring it behind the scene. Uh, this quick side demo is done on a special account that was whitelisted to access. We can see how Twitter and sentiment about AWS started changing this morning yeah. before Andy's keynote. Oh, we can actually monitor this ourselves and see the live feedback. Are you monitoring the sentiment of the service? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think, let, let me just <laughs> yeah. kind of add to that. There's, so, there's so really, yeah. yeah. So it's a it's exactly. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 oh man, you should uh, smile more. Exactly. <laughs> there's really three That's core awesome. patterns that we want customers to think about. The first one's voice of, voice, their voice of customer analytics. Right. The second one is Elasticsearch can get better with this service. You can do, you can process documents with NLP, put them into Elasticsearch, you could search on sentiment. That's yep. phenomenal. That's if you're a support customer group, that's an amazing view to have. The third thing is really knowledge and information management. Right, we have customers say, we've got all these documents, we've got all these rules and regulations, this service allows you to look inside them, organize them, and then take action however you want. So those are three core things we urge you to kind of think about starting with. So, so there's a, a stream question here from Ectus2. Uh, can you set up a model on AWS and just submit documents? Yeah, well that's what the service is, but the question is, what kind of volume can the service handle in real time? If customers want to push extremely high volumes of documents or extremely high volumes of text fragments through the service, is there any service limits that need to be lifted or can they just go wild and submit in any volume to you? How does that work? Right, so I mean, service is designed to scale uh, to a very large volumes. Yep. We do have a default limits. 
Uh, so if you are processing extremely large volumes, you have to contact us and we'll, we'll, we'll lift and update the limits. Uh, but to the large volume processing, there's actually two types of APIs. Yep. We design a special API for people who want to process large volume. So you can submit one document at a time, or you can submit 25 documents at a time. Okay, so there's a batch and based model, right? So, and we will take these 25 documents and we'll take care of essentially scaling it for you. Okay. So using that batch... Yeah. Yeah. Is that async kind of yeah. 25 documents? No, document. it is fully synchronous. It's also synchronous, So you right. give 25 documents okay. and you get back a response structured in a way that describes your document. So using that API, you can process really large scale yeah. data. That's cool. Awesome. All right, do we have more questions? Uh, there's a question, can this be used to process chat logs from things like uh, Twitch? <laughs> Just messages, right? So yep. any sort of message format you exactly. can process. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We, actually, that's, that's kind of a canonical use case, to be honest. You yep. know, we have customers saying, we've got a lot of comments, we've got a lot of chat-based activity. Yep. It's really, what conversation are you having with your customers? And they're all fair game for the service. I imagine yeah. quite a lot of Slack channels might be seeing an Amazon Comprehend bot appearing in them quite soon. Right. Well, uh, I sure. think I might be, uh, might be working on that myself later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or we can integrate it with Amazon Lex, <laughs> and know. you can build a chatbot with Amazon Lex that I immediately connects and analyzes your data. Yeah. You have to be careful because there's about thousands of people online <laughs> that are going to start building stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Go so for it. <laughs> go free, go free. But don't steal all the ideas. I want to build demos as well for my, <laughs> my toast. <laughs> That's great. I think you can appreciate, guys, that this is a service that Adrian and I are really excited, excited so about using so ourselves. Excited. So we want to get hands on with this as quickly uh, as possible. I love it. Show sure a lot of those people watching the stream do as well. Uh, so if there's no more questions, I think we can wrap up. OK, so we're going to end this segment here. Thanks for joining us on twitch.tv slash AWS. Thanks. We will Thanks be right much. back Thanks, in Thanks, uh, just a few minutes. Thank you. Cool. See you soon. Right. Thanks, guys.